Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to part two of my updated mod spotlight for Batania. Uh, this episode we've got a lot of mechanics and even more cool items and toys to cover. So last episode we covered a handful of different new mechanics as well as some really cool nifty gadgets and toys, but this episode we've got even more of the same, a whole bunch of different cool things. I can't wait to show you a lot of these nifty things, so let's get started checking it out with, I don't know, let's try the assembly halo first. So the assembly halo is an actually really cool nifty device. Check it out. When you've got it open in your hand here, the first thing you have access to is a crafting table. That's not really in the world. Simply right click and you've got a crafting interface and you can craft whatever blocks you want. For example, a vanilla furnace or a crafting table or a lever. Neat. Uh, now let's say that you happen to be moseying along and you want some more things along those lines. Well, look at this. Uh, if you'll notice, the last thing you crafted, you can right click on one of these slots here and bind the last thing you crafted to that slot. Cool. So let's go ahead and uh, also do the same with the furnace. Cool. You'll notice, boom, right click there, recipe set. Cool. Now if you want any more furnaces, it's really pretty easy. All you have to do is right click. You'll notice I just got another furnace and it used up some of the cobblestone in my inventory. And if I keep right clicking, it'll use up all the cobblestone in my inventory until you run out of materials. And the same for sticks. So if you need more sticks, no problem. Crafting it up real quick and easy. How cool is that? You can uh, go ahead and set all the different recipes here that you want. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, shift left click to remove the recipe. Nice. The next two items I wanna show you are the Cloak of Virtue and the Cloak of Sin. These two cloaks are pretty neat. You can go ahead and equip uh, these things in the belt slot, so in the slave slot that your Sojourner Sash or other things might go. The Cloak of Virtue will protect you from the last hit that would normally kill you. And then after that, there's a 10 second cooldown before that cloak can protect you again. Uh, now, conversely, your Cloak of Sin is going to damage any hostile creatures nearby uh, when you get attacked and we'll wind up uh, having, again, a 10 second cooldown. So let's give this thing a try. Nice. Notice how both spiders took damage as soon as the one hit me. That's because they each received a bit of damage on account of my wearing the Cloak of Sin. Again, there's a 10 second cooldown for each of them. Now here's an interesting block called the Mana Prism. As we know, you can go ahead and put a large number of different lenses uh, onto your uh, mana spreader here. However, if you want to change a lens mid-flight, for example, if we wanted mana lens board to be applied, we could put a mana prism in front of a mana burst, and then the mana lens um, will affect the burst traveling through it. So let's see what happens. Uh, we'll note that the mana burst gets converted on the way through and turns into a bore type of mana burst cool. It'll also change the color to match the color of the lens. Uh, if there is no color applied, you'll note that it does turn it white. Cool. And the last thing to note is that there is no physical form, so entities, mobs, creatures, players can walk right through it. No problem. Another nifty gadget, trodden dirt. Uh, this trodden dirt is meant to be made uh, for paths, so you can go ahead and walk on it. You'll also notice that you get a slight speed boost as you run across this trodden dirt, and it's slightly inset into the ground, kind of like, uh, you know, tilled soil for farming, but it just looks nice, and it makes you run faster. So we've looked at a couple cool gadgets. Let's go ahead and look at a few things that are mechanics-based now, and then we'll come back to some of the nifty toys and gadgets that you have available to you in Batania. First, let's talk about sparks. So sparks are a new and powerful way to transmit mana from one mana pool to another and also to fuel some of the mechanical processes in Batania, as well as helping out the player a little bit. Let's take a look at some of the different things you can do with sparks. So first off, you're going to want to place a spark onto a mana pool. And you can give this spark all kinds of different properties through augments if you wish. Uh, there are some things you can do without augments, and we'll cover that in a moment. But first, let's talk about what augments can do. So a dispersive spark is cool. If you right-click on it, you'll notice that the spark is now transmitting mana to me. And if you look on my hotbar, you'll notice that I have a mana tablet that's quickly being filled up. So what the dispersive spark does is it transmits mana from the pool into the player's mana storing items, be it one of the rings that stores mana, or a mana tablet, or a similar mechanic like that. That's pretty neat all on its own. So that gives you enough reason. If you want, you can shift right click to remove the spark uh, augment, and then you get it back. 
The next type of spark I want to show you guys is the dispersive spark. Uh, so let's take a look at what this does. You're going to want another um, mana pool nearby to get the dispersive spark transmitted to it because what it does is it will transmit any mana to any mana pools in the area. Um, that was the recessive spark again. I wanted the dispersive spark. There we go, recessive spark. will transmit its mana to any nearby mana pools and start filling them up. So you'll notice this mana pool quickly getting filled. There is no spark uh, augment on this guy. So this one, the recessive spark, will transmit mana to any nearby pools, provided there's a spark on it. Once there's a spark there, boom, now it's going to both of them. Very cool. Conversely, there is the dominant spark. The dominant spark is kind of the opposite of the recessive spark. And the way this works is, well, let me show you. We'll put this guy far enough away that he's not going to be able to get mana from those pools. There we go. So the dominant spark can receive mana and pulls mana from any nearby pools. So there we go. Dominant pulls the mana towards the mana pool, and the recessive spark will distribute it to any nearby pools, like so. Very cool. And the final type of spark is called the isolated spark. And what this does is it means that uh, dominant and recessive sparks have no effect on the spark that is marked with the isolated spark. So you can see he's no longer receiving mana because he's isolated, but if we remove that augment, he is now once again receiving mana and isolate him again, etc. Neat. Now we can go ahead and use these sparks to power a couple of the cool processes that are available to us. One of them is the new way to handle Terra Steel. So let's go ahead and clear out a little bit of terrain here for the Terra Steel agglomeration plate. Now this is a new mechanic. In the past, you guys might recall that Terra Steel required a Nether Star. That is no longer the case. So you can go ahead and get access to Terra Steel as well as um, the um, Alpine Portal and all that good stuff prior to having killed a Wither, which is neat. It gives you e earlier access to some of the higher tier stuff. So how do we get Terra Steel? It's pretty easy. First off, you need this terrestrial agglomeration plate and you need to build a pattern like I just did. Uh, now, typically you'd either have to feed this with uh, Mana Burst, but I highly recommend having a spark on it. Now, one thing to note here is that there are no augments on any of these sparks. These are all just normal sparks, not augmented. Uh, any of the augments you craft do require the portal to Elfheim, but the regular spark by itself does not. So that's an important thing to note because you're going to want to use uh, these nifty little sparks here to get your first piece of Terra Steel. So how do we get Terra Steel? Well, it's pretty easy. Luckily, there's an NEI thing that shows you how to do it. Um, what we need is a mana, pearl, diamond, and a mana steel ingot. Let's see, where is that guy? So here is the process for making terra steel in the new versions of Batania. Uh, you're going to need a pretty full mana pool nearby and recommend two sparks. They don't need augments, like I said. Drop your mana steel ingot, your mana pearl, and your mana diamond. And let the magic happen. So this is the process, like I said, for creating Terra Steel nowadays. No longer do you need a Nether Star. How cool is that? I like that. So you'll also notice that this process does take a bit of time, and in the end, it's probably going to wind up using about half of a mana pool. So you can see it's almost completed here. Our mana pool is nearing that halfway point. It was full before we started, and that's probably the completion of the process. Cool. So about half a mana pool equals a piece of Terra Steel, which of course you can use for all kinds of cool stuff, like nifty gadgets and toys, and uh, you know, a few other nifty things. You can get an idea of what it's for. So while we're on the topic of sparks, let's talk about the Corporeal Spark Network. There's several cool things you can do. First off, you're gonna need to have a master corporeal spark, and you're gonna wanna place that on some kind of inventory, like a chest. And you'll notice it's just kinda of sitting there, floating around, doing its nifty little thing. In addition to that, you're gonna want some regular corporeal sparks. We're gonna place them down on these chests, like so. 
You'll also notice a little icon floating around there. That defines uh, the type of uh, Spark network that it is. We'll get into that in just a moment. You'll notice when you right click on a Spark, you can see that they're all talking to each other. Sparks in the corporeal Spark network uh, have kind of a shorter range than normal Sparks do, but they can pretty much go on forever, provided that you uh, you know connect one Spark to the next. So keep in mind, relatively shorter range, but definitely could go on forever if you wanted to. Now, what can you do with these things? Well, they are having the ability to transfer items from one location to another. And there's a whole bunch of neat stuff we can do with it. So let's do some things. Uh, you know, we'll put some cobblestone in, we'll put some smooth stone in, and we'll do some chests as well as a diamond axe. What can we do with this? Well, let's find out. So one of the first things you can access this Spark network with is the Corporea Funnel. Cool? So let's go ahead and place our Spark on there and confirm using our wand that everything's connected. Beautiful. They're all talking to each other. This network is now accessing all the stuff here. Remember, we have chests, we have cobblestone, and we have smooth stone. If you place an item frame on the side of this thing and place an item in it like cobblestone, anytime this block receives a redstone signal, ta-da, you'll notice a little particle effect occur on the top. And every time that occurs, a piece of cobblestone is pulled from any one of the chests that has cobblestone in it and sent into the inventory either directly below the funnel or an extra block below the funnel, so AKA two blocks down. So one or two blocks down, flip the lever, cobblestone shows up. Neat. Uh, so let's try this with chests and see if that works as well. So we're gonna remove this guy here and put the chest in. Nice. And now for the ultimate and awesome Corporea abilities. That would be the Corporea Index. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and place a Corporea Spark on top, boom, like so, and you'll notice that whenever you get near the Corporea Spark, a nifty little particle effect will occur. And that particle effect outlines the radius within which the player needs to stand for this nifty Corporea Index to work. What this does is allow you to vocally request items from the network. So for example, if I wanted a chest, I would type chest. Boom, requested one checks. Out of 56, one taken. Ah, there's 55 left. Cool, let's request another chest. Boom, one chest received. Now we've got 54 remaining in there, and we've got two here. You know what else? I would like some smooth stone. Requested one stone. Out of 44, one taken. Haha, <laughs> how cool is that? Nice. You'll also notice that on the bottom right, it's indicating that there's a corporea index nearby. Anything you say will be intercepted as a request. Simply back away from it, and no longer does that work. Standing nearby, stone, boom, get a piece of stone. But there's more. Uh, let's say I just want to request whatever's in my hand currently. I just type this. Boom, I got stone. Type this here, and I got cobblestone. Now I just place some iron ingots in this chest. So if I were to type iron, oh, nope, no such thing as iron. But if I type iron, there's still nothing there, huh? But if we type iron with three dots after it, it'll go ahead and find anything with the word iron in it and grab it. So you'll see we could either do that or iron ingot. And it would grab one of those as well. Cool. There's even more complex things you can request. So for example, if I wanted 10 of something, I could say 10 of this, boom, 10 cobblestone taken. A stack of this, boom, 64 cobblestones taken. Nice, 12 of stone, a dozen stone, neat. So there's a bunch of different things you can do. Um, you could even say two stacks of this, 128 cobblestone taken, that's pretty neat. You'll even note you can do things like half a stack of this, and you'll get 32 cobblestone. So another thing you can do is count how many of an item exists. So if you do count this, it'll say there's zero taken, 16 remain. Uh, and if you wanted to, for example, see if there's any item frames in there, we could say count this, there you go, or count iron, and you'll see there's 61. And finally, if you want all of something, uh, you should be able to type all or every cobble, That'll get you all the cobble that you could possibly get. 310 out of 310 taken. Now the cobble chest is empty. 
And as a final note, if you wanted to, you can segment networks by coloring them using floral powder. So if I right click on this with an orange powder piece, you'll notice that these guys are now all linked together. Remember I said that you need to have a master corporea spark on the network somewhere. So if you want this separate network to exist, notice that they're white by default. You can toggle them to purple or something like that if you want. Uh, these guys aren't gonna work until you get a master node on him as well. So make sure you have a master set up somewhere. Now this network can only access the these three things. Cool. Also to note is the Master Corporea Spark does not access uh, the chest that it's in, so you won't be able to request items out of this chest, uh, the one that the Master's on. So now that I've properly blown your mind with some uh, complex spark mechanics, let's have a little fun checking out some of the cosmetic things you can get from Batania. Uh, there's a large number of items. I'm going to show you just a small handful, uh, but let me tell you, there's just a ton, right, that you can get uh, to wear in your bobble slots that are cosmetic. For example, I can be a pirate. Yar, matey. With an eye patch. Uh, you can, if you wanted to, take that out and put on this nifty gadget. A nifty little tail. <laughs> cool. Uh, what else you could do? Well, I could wear some cool 3D glasses. Or perhaps a bow tie. Oh, looking fancy. Now, I know what you're probably saying. Direwolf, this is taking up a bobble slot. I might want to put something useful in there, like a ring of magnetization or a pyroclast pendant or something like that. Have no fear. Simply combine those items in a crafting table, and you've got a ring of magnetization that has a cosmetic override, black bow tie. Note that when you place that ring in your inventory now, you're wearing that bow tie because you've combined them in a crafting table. Oh, yeah. Looking cool. Did I mention there was a cool mask? There's a cool mask. Now let's get back to the spotlight. Did I mention Batania has a new brewing system? Batania has a new brewing system. Uh, what you're gonna need are some vials. So you're gonna either need mana glass vials or you're gonna need some elf glass flasks. Elf glass flasks uh, are made with elf glass, which you need to drop some mana glass into uh, the Alfheim portal. So it's up to you which one you go with. The main difference is elf glass flasks can store more uses than uh, the typical mana glass flasks. Um, so let's go ahead and check those nifty gases out. So uh, if we were to get vials, there we go, that's what I was looking for. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do with it. Cool. Uh, you can use these guys for all kinds of nifty gadgets in the botanical brewery. Your main things are going to be similar to potions that you've seen in the past. So for example, you've got speed potions, strength potions, haste potions, instant health, jump boost, regeneration, that kind of cool stuff. If you want to craft one of these, it's easy. Just look up the recipe in NEI or check in your Batania Lexica Batania thingy and you'll note nether wart, sugar, and redstone. So let's get it. Nether wart. We'll get a bunch of it because we're probably going to demo a couple of these. Sugar and redstone. Cool. Uh, simply place these on the pedestal along with your vial. So one vial, which goes in the center, nether wart, redstone, and sugar. And all of a sudden, any nearby mana spreader that's pointed directly at it, boom. We'll go ahead and send mana into it. It'll use the mana to do the crafting, and you've got your vial of um, fleet feet. And if you wanted to use your Alfheim glass for the same kind of process, it'll probably use up a little bit more mana. As you can tell, it's taking a little bit longer for this crafting process to occur, but it's all worth it because in the end, boom, you get something with six uses as opposed to four. So simply carry around this vial, and if you decide you want the speed effect, there we go, fleet feet, and we have five uses left. Awesome, and we have speed too. Zoom in, nice. Uh, so there's a bunch of different flasks and vials you can create. Um, now, aside from the normal list of uh, cool things you can get, like fire resistant, there's a couple other ones that are a little bit more unusual. Uh, for example, you can get yourself absorption, which protects you from any damage coming in. But there's also these crazy things like overload. Uh, these are some of the more advanced potions. So what do these potions do? Well, I might show one or two of them, but I think for the most part, I'm going to leave it up to you to download the mod and check it out. But you'll also notice that there's a nifty warp ward potion here, which uh, is an integration with Thaumcraft. Awesome. Now, one nifty mechanic that you can do is instead of doing this with a mana glass vial, you can also use the Tainted Blood Pendant. Uh, this requires some Prismarine shards, a Ghast here and a Mana Diamond. Remember, Prismarine can be crafted with Nether Quartz in uh, Mana Infusion with a Mana Pool. Don't forget, though, you will need to have your Alchemy Catalyst sitting underneath it. Uh, let's go ahead and place our Tainted Blood Pendant right there. And again, we're going to do Nether Wart, Redstone, and Sugar. 
Cool. Now this is going to take uh, significantly more mana than either of the potions did. So I'll come back in a minute when it's done. There we go. Looks like it's almost completed. So you'll notice that this pendant has now the Brew of Fleet Feet imbued within it. And it's equipable in the amulet slot. So what that means is, boom, put that amulet on and you're going to have speed too as long as you wear it. Nice. And there's several amulets available, as you can see, for all the different potion types. The ones that make sense, of course. There's no instant health amulet, because that wouldn't make any sense, but there is a regeneration amulet. Uh, there's the Brew of Gills, which gives you water breathing. There's the Brew of Cloaking, which gives you invisibility. Nice. Some very cool stuff. Do keep in mind that wearing this pendant will drain mana out of a mana tablet in your inventory, and if you don't have one, your speed effect is going to wear off. Or, for example, if your mana tablet is empty. No speed effect for me. But don't worry, give yourself a mana tablet that does have some mana in it, and you're pretty much good to go again. So next up, guys, let's talk boss battles. Uh, the Guardian of Gaia is one of the boss battles available in Batania, and I did say one. Uh, this guy requires Elementium and Mana Steel blocks in the following pattern with a beacon underneath. You'll also notice that one, two, three blocks and one, two, three, four, five blocks away, we've got Gaia pylons that are just a little bit above where the beacon would be. So two blocks up from the ground in this following pattern. Uh, you can also see this, as I mentioned, in the Lexic Batania right here that shows you the exact pattern layout that you're gonna want. Cool. What you need to do is simply get yourself one of those Terra Steel ingots that we crafted earlier and right click on this here beacon. Uh oh. So once you make sure you're not in peaceful mode, Derpy Dyer, uh, you can go ahead and uh, right click this beacon with your Terra Steel ingot. By the way, also highly recommend having some armor on ready to go and uh, some kind of offensive weapon that's probably a little better than a diamond sword, but we'll see what happens. Boom. Uh, shift right click this guy and. Dun, dun, dun. massive battle happens. You'll notice I can no longer fly. So this will definitely debuff your ability to fly. Uh, you're gonna want some kind of uh, better thing than I have going on here. The sword's not bad, it'll probably work. Uh, fighting this boss is no easy task, I need to warn you. Uh, Rod of the Unstable Reservoir might be pretty nice to use right now. Oh, but it doesn't look like it's really working too well on him. And that's not good. By the way, uh, the link to the description of this video will have information on the artist that did the song for this uh, battle here. Pretty neat. You should be aware of the fact that as hard as that boss is, there is a second tier of it. Go ahead and check out Ritual of Gaia 2. Uh, this guy, when you summon with the Gaia Spirit, will get an even more difficult boss. So again, make sure you're not in peaceful mode and... Dun, 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 dun. This boss is that much more difficult. Yikes. I should mention there's an even more difficult boss in Batania, the Ritual of Gaia 2. Eh, I don't even want to summon him, to be honest with you, because he's really pretty brutal. Uh, he's not the end of the world, but it is definitely a hard fight. Recommend having some enchanted Terra Steel armor, or better. Uh, go ahead and make yourself a Terra Steel ingot surrounded with Gaia Spirits, which you can only get by killing the first Gaia Guardian, or the second one, for that matter, um, and you'll get a Gaia Spirit ingot. Go ahead and shift right click this into the beacon get another boss fight. Dun, 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 dun. Again, with more cool, cool music. Uh, again, you want to check out the description of this video for a link to the artist who did the music for this boss battle. The next block is a little tricky to use, but it is the method of auto-crafting in Batania. Let's take a look. Uh, what you need to do is pipe items into it. It does not have an interface, as you can see, so no right-clicking to doing stuff. Uh, what you want to do is pipe items in in a specific order, and those will fill each of the nine slots of the crafting table, as demonstrated in the book here. So, for example, if you wanted to craft a diamond pickaxe, the first three items you place in would be diamonds, and those would land in slots one, two, and three, respectively. Then, because you don't want anything in slot four, you're going to want to go ahead and drop a crafting placeholder in there. What that does is tell the crafting table not to treat that as any item. Your fifth slot will be a stick. Your sixth and seventh slots will be those placeholders again. Your eighth slot will be a stick, so that you have stick, stick, diamond, 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 and then your ninth slot will be the placeholder. Uh, let's try this with something else. A little bit easier. I'm going to use my good old friend, the example, the furnace, which as we know is just eight pieces of cobblestone. So one, two, three will fill up slots one, two, three. Slot four goes in, and then we want a placeholder, and then we want slot six, seven, eight, nine. 
Cool. So now that should be properly filled. To tell it to craft is really quite easy. Just right click. Boom. You'll notice that we got our furnace and we got our crafting placeholder. And remember, dispensers, as well as any other autonomous type of uh, right-click mechanic, can go ahead and right-click these things using the Wand of the Forest. So um, keep that in mind. You can use dispensers if you want, or like I said, any other mod that can automatically right-click for you. Nice. And finally, there are some crafting patterns. So if you're going to always be doing something similar to what we just did, you can go ahead and uh, lock down the crafting placeholders. So for example, if you're always going to be crafting in a 2x2 two two pattern like that, um, or a 1x2 pattern for sticks, or you know this pattern here, or if you wanted the pattern like we just did, you go ahead and craft like that. And what that should allow you to do is lock it in. So if we right click with this pattern here, you'll notice the red block here is always blocked out. So if we were to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, what it should have done is automatically placed a placeholder in that middle slot because of the pattern applied there. And when we right click, Boom, we should get our furnace. Nice. Briefly, I want to talk about Ender Air. Uh, basically, what Ender Air is, is really easy. All you have to do is go to the end and right click with a glass bottle. This is a crafting component uh, that's going to be used in several of the recipes that we've seen so far. So glass bottles, right? And if we do Ender Air, we should see this in here. You'll notice it doesn't have a crafting recipe. Let's go to Dimension 1, aka the end. Simply anywhere in the end, right click with your glass bottle, and boom, you'll get some ender air. Nice. So remember, that's going to be used for some of the crafting patterns we need. You've already seen some of the items that ender air is needed for, so I wanted to make sure you knew how to get it. By the way, I was told to mention something about Konami code? I don't know. Is that that up, up, down, down thingy? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to drop that as a little hint. You guys figure it out. All right, guys, I think for now we need to wrap up part two of the Batania Spotlight. Guess what? I've still got some stuff to cover. So we're going to come back next episode. We're going to talk about some of the uber-powerful items that you get from killing Gaia Guardian 2.0. We've got a bunch more gadgets and tools and items to show you, um, and a couple other nifty things like bows. Uh, we've got some rings. We've got some nifty horns that we haven't gotten to yet. The Pinkinator. Can't wait to show you guys that one. That's kind of my favorite. It's neat. Um, and a handful of other cool things. Armor set bonuses, ancient wills, all kinds of cool stuff. The Mana Seer monocle, that's pretty neat. We haven't checked that out yet. So I hope you guys are excited to check out part three of the Batania Spotlight. You've already seen two parts, and this is just an update spotlight. This is covering the things that have been added since the last time I did a spotlight. And holy cow, has there been a lot added. All right, guys, for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys have enjoyed part two of the Batania Spotlight. As usual, leave me some comments and feedback in the description uh, or comment section of this video, and I will be looking forward to reading them. All right, guys, take it easy.